by far the most effective branch of political education, which in this connection is best expressed by the word propaganda, is carried on by the press. The press is the chief means employed in the process of political enlightenment. It represents a kind of school for adults. It took the press only a few days to transform some ridiculously trivial matter into an issue of national importance, while vital problems were completely ignored. The press succeeded in the magical art of producing names from nowhere within the course of a few weeks. They made it appear that the great hopes of the masses were bound up with those names, and so they made those names more popular than any man of real ability could ever hope to be in a long lifetime. There's a lot of people who are going to be very, very unhappy. To just say you're insured uh, won't uh, please a lot of people. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. These highway robbers would grab at anything which might serve their evil ends. They would poke their noses into the most intimate family affairs and would not rest until they had sniffed out some petty item which could be used to destroy the reputation of their victim. But if the result of all this sniffing should be that nothing derogatory was discovered, they continued to hurl abuse at him in the belief that some of their animadversions would stick, even though refuted a thousand times. In most cases, it finally turned out impossible for the victim to continue his defence, because the accuser worked together with so many accomplices that his slanders were re-echoed interminably. I like to sleep with boys. <laughs> the psyche of the broad masses is accessible only to what is strong and uncompromising. They feel very little shame at being terrorized intellectually, and they're scarcely conscious of the fact that their freedom as human beings is impudently abused, and thus they have not the slightest suspicion of the intrinsic fallacy of the whole doctrine. They see only the ruthless force and brutality of its determined utterances, to which they always submit. In like manner, the masses of the people prefer the ruler to the suppliant, and are filled with a stronger sense of mental security by a teaching that brooks no rival, than by a teaching which offers them a liberal choice. One truth which must always be borne in mind, is that the majority can never replace the man. The majority represents not only ignorance, He's an Arab. but also cowardice. And just as a hundred blockheads do not equal one man of wisdom, so a hundred poltroons are incapable of any political line of action that requires moral strength and fortitude. How little such a line of conduct commends itself to our public leaders nowadays is proved by the general corruption prevalent among the cabal. In discussing economic questions, its statements were false and its proofs unsound. I don't know. I'd have to get back to you on that. Y excuse me? I'd have to get back to you on that. I don't recall the details. In treating of political aims, its attitude was insincere. Its modern methods of chicanery and the presentation of its arguments were profoundly repugnant to me. The answer the question, was it from you or Sir, not? Permit, permit me, do you guys want me to finish my answer? Have you reasonable, you do the questions, I do the answers, and this jackass interrupts me? How about that as the, as the new rule of the game? Its flamboyant sentences, its obscure and incomprehensible phrases, pretended to contain great thoughts but they were devoid of thought. He has to have accomplices in order to be able to shift responsibility to other shoulders whenever it is opportune to do so. Are there 
Are there some federal workers who do boneheaded things? Absolutely. My counsel has advised me that I have not waived my constitutional rights under the Fifth Amendment, and on his advice, I will decline to answer any question on the subject matter of this hearing. They want to have only their own company, and will quickly take a hostile attitude towards any man who might show himself obviously above and beyond them. They have less fear of a man of genius who lacks willpower than of a vigorous character with mediocre intelligence. They stand in a long queue, painfully and sadly counting the number of those ahead of them and calculating the hours until they may eventually come forward. And they are grateful for every scandal which removes one of the aspirants waiting ahead of them in the queue. The Social Democrats know how to create the impression that they alone are protectors of peace. In this way, acting very circumspectly, but never losing sight of their ultimate goal, they conquer one position after another, at one time by methods of quiet intimidation, and at another time by sheer daylight robbery, employing these latter tactics at those moments when public attention is turned towards other matters from which it does not wish to be diverted. Yeah.